Uh, I think we need to stress here that the pandemic crisis, the crisis, the economic crisis resulted from the pandemic is, act, is actually multidimensional. Uh, so it means that its recovery too has to be multidimensional. Uh, so for example, we should first thing, if we want to recover, we should be recover from what? Are we recovering our GDP? But that's not the only one. I think people should not forget that recovery is not only from GDP, from, because the crisis is multidimensional. Yeah? So in addition to recover from GDP, we, uh, falling GDP, we have to recover from rising poverty, we have to recover from rising inequality, and maybe some many, many more. Yeah? And also, uh, if we talk about recovery, what do you mean by recovery? Are we recovering to get the pre-crisis, let's say, GDP level? Is it the level that we want to recover to? Or is it just the growth? It's because it's different. Yeah? Another issue that we should ask of ourselves yeah, is uh, if it's about recovery, uh, when exactly do you think we can call ourselves recovered? Yeah? So that's just at least three questions we need to ask when we want to talk about the recovery of crisis, especially this pandemic crisis. And if I may, <coughs> if I may uh, give examples, yeah, at least. So at least I think we have to recover from the following. We have to recover from falling GDP per capita. Not only GDP, but falling GDP per capita that happened in 2020 at least minus 2.5 percent. So we have to recover from that. Yeah. Because GDP per capita is very important yeah. in, 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 the determi- in the determination of the status, welfare status, at least on average for our country. Yeah. So we have to recover from falling GDP per capita, but that's not the only one. So we have to also recover from rising poverty. Yeah. In 2020, which is predicted to be at least one percent, but it can be even worse to six percent additional poverty incident incidents. Yeah? And apart from property, we also have to recover from rising inequality. Yeah? Because apparently the pandemic actually uh, makes most of us suffer, but people who are in the lower part of the distributions actually suffer more. So it means we have rising inequality. We have to recover from that too. We have to recover from rising unemployment. This is very important because now we have an additional 2% employment. If we are talking about 150 or 100 something million people, so we're talking about millions of people that don't have jobs. And we have to return the job to them. It means that's, that's what's called recovery. Yeah. Another is we, now we have bigger debt. At least in this year and next year, we will have additional 5% of GDP government debt. And this is also something that we have to recover from because this cannot be forever. Yeah. Who will pay for this? Yeah. And then this is one thing that I most disturbing actually to me because of my role as an educator. We have a deteriorating human capital from school closure. Uh, and this effect, yeah, the effect of this will be permanent, yeah, unless we do something very transformative. Another thing is we have to recover also from human capital uh, deteriorating, the coming from malnutrition because people with lo- Indonesia, even before COVID crisis, has quite high malnutrition, I stunting. I think one of, I, I think, uh, two out of five, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Indonesian children under five experience uh, stunting, and stunting actually is a is is a sign of lower intellectual capacity for the futures of these children. Yeah? And 
if you have a crisis, this will be even worse because people don't have money and people and normally nutrition, good nutrition for children is not actually something that people put priority on. Yeah. Uh, we have also may get a declining productivity from global value chain disruptions because uh, global value chain is actually nowadays is a source yeah, of technological improvement in terms of the productions because uh, we are part of the global chains of production technology yeah. so actually there are a bit of transfer technology is spillover, spillover, spillover uh, in our economy yet because of the crisis this stops not stop actually disrupt yeah. so the productivity then uh, will deteriorate too and I think uh, there are more to this yeah like I, this is this is not all uh, exhausted list but things that I want to emphasize is this final point during this cri- during this crisis this all these indicators will deteriorate together yeah. all falling for example yeah. I mean deteriorating yeah. however uh, however the when 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 we when we recover yeah there is no guarantee that this, this will recover together again at the same rate why because all these variables may have been related but how they relate it depend on various other factors for example yeah you can have recovery from falling gdp per capita by increasing economic growth more but you can do that without recovering from poverty but you can do that without recovering from rising inequality you can have jobless growth yeah that means that we can recover from gdp per capita but we are not recover from rising unemployment so that's an issue that i think people need to talk about more yeah because recovery definitely is not only about economic growth this crisis again i say again again and again this crisis is multidimensional so its recovery has to be also mean has to be also uh, multidimensional and we have to consider some trade off among these indicators uh, let's talk about gdp per capita I just want to share you about the magnitude of what we're facing. Yeah? This is this is this is the quarter to quarter uh, GDP that was very recently coming from World Bank uh, report titled "From Containment to Recovery: Economic Update for the Asia Pacific for Indonesia." So as you can see here, if what we are if the recovery what we are talking about is come back to the pre-crisis level. Actually, it will take uh, more than one year to recover from that. So, uh, if you see the picture correctly, then we will be coming to the pre-crisis uh, GDP level in quarter two, 2021. Yeah. And and as you can see from this picture, if you go forward yeah, to the future, you can see that we will never recover. I mean, we, 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 if we talk about if we, 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 what we mean by recovery is come back to the pre, uh, to the to the to the, lo, to the to the previous trend. Yeah? So instead, so if we talk about recovery is coming to this line, yeah. So we'll never reach that. So at least we are recovering our economic growth because the slope is the same but we're not returning to the uh, pre-crisis trend okay so it means the loss the economic cost yeah, that we get from this crisis is permanent and we never recover it because the cost of the 
crisis in terms of the correct interpretation of economic opportunity cost is is the difference between the pre-crisis trend and the actual one we get. And that gap persists, it means the cost is permanent. Yeah. So 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 and but but apparently we are not alone. Yeah. Uh, most countries in in in, in the world and in, in especially particularly in this four other countries uh, experiencing the same thing in terms of the profile of the recovery, the economic growth, GDP. Some some better than us, like Taiwan, uh, sorry Vietnam, uh, but some is worse than us, like Philippines. Yeah? Philippines, for example, will take another double the time we get, yeah? the time that we will have, just to come back from the pre-crisis level of GDP, let alone their pre-crisis uh, trend. Yeah, so we're not alone. But we are not the worst, but we are not the best. Yeah. Uh, but I'm more interested in the situations of the poverty as a result of the pandemic and the prospect of coming back to uh, uh, to our pre-crisis. Uh, this is what happened, and I think it's quite serious. Uh, this this is. The latest data on poverty is actually in March 2020 for Indonesia, which actually uh, is not the period central to the crisis because that's only the beginning of the pandemic. But uh, poverty has already declined quite significantly yeah? uh, in March. Yeah? And as you can see from this data, uh, Poverty increased quite a bit yeah, here. So almost 1% increase, I think, a uh, little bit less yeah, here. But what, uh, what is most worrying to me is what happened in urban areas. This is in urban areas. As you, as why I'm most, I, I'm uh, most concerned about this, for, uh, uh, because Indonesia is actually urban now yeah and the urbanization rate is quite high because many people go to urban area every year new people coming to urban area and many region from rural they turn into urban area too and it's quite rapid this transformations and then and then also in the future this is even becoming more relevant why because uh, in 2030 for example we we will be projected to have our people live in urban area 70% of them yeah so urban is our future so and this covid crisis hit urban area a lot more yeah, than in rural area and as, as you can see here the even during march yeah, the poverty this is the incidence yeah, the, the the incidence mean the percentage of people who live below poverty line in urban area Increase quite a lot, yeah, and it's equivalent to our property incident two and a half years ago. Can you imagine two and a half years ago? That more, that's that's half of of the age, oh, the durations of the elected administration. Like every election, you give half of uh, five years to govern, right? And 2.5, two and a half years is half of the period gone. The improvement of the poverty that we get in two and a half years gone just like that. This is something serious. And and this is not maybe this is not the worst because because the worst may yet to come because this is only March. Last month BPS already did some survey to measure this again yeah? and if I may borrow from the uh, Smeru, uh, Smeru forecast so well the worst case scenario for Smeru forecast we can also we can increase property nationally by even 16% yeah? so 
I am worried the worst is yet to come. And also, if we talk about poverty in terms of number of people, that's even more dire situation. As you can see here in urban area, people, especially number of people who get into poverty, falling but at very low rate. Yeah? Because of many reasons, one of them is people who become urbanized also increase, yeah? but still, well, if we want to re- 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 reduce the number of poor people, this, is a, this, this has to be our target too. Yeah? And as you can see, it's because of the slow rate of declining number of people in urban area, the increase of this year of number of people in poverty is equivalent to nine years improvement. So if you count the number of poor people in urban area now, in terms of million of them, the number is equivalent to nine years ago because of this crisis. Yeah. Uh, so, and this will be uh, affected by how eco- our economy actually in September, because September were, were the BPS survey. But, but uh, however, uh, there is hope, yeah, because in March, uh, that's just the beginning of the, of the uh, crisis. Uh, however, uh, the, uh, after that, the gov- we, uh, we have government assistance. Yeah? And then um, my colleague has to give me an update of this. And actually, uh, up to a week ago, 70% of social assistance uh, given to the poor has been disbursed. So this is a good sign. So hopefully the worst scenario of poverty increase that was predicted by many people will not happen yeah? because of this. Yeah? I really hope that it's work and I think yes, it, it will work. Yeah? So this is my hope that the worst scenario won't happen because of this. Uh, another variable that also worry me is inequality because the impact of the pandemic is not proportionally uh, distributed across group of people especially in terms of the socioeconomic status as you can see from here during the pandemic at least if we compare march to the previous semester you have in uh, in many area in many province this this is province uh, where COVID-19 uh, has impacted quite significantly, especially urban Java province. Yeah? You can see there, almost all, I think all of them, uh, experience rising in inequality. And I'm, we are quite certain that this is related to the COVID-19 impact because first, it is against the longer term, longer trend. Because the longer trend, if you can see from the previous years, actually the secular trend of inequality in this region actually declining. Yeah. Yet, here they are increasing. And also, we did some, uh, some analysis, anal- analysis with the data, uh, because we thought, uh, this is paper that written by two of my colleagues and me, uh, actually, we argue that if the effect of mobility yeah, on economic growth is less than the effect of mobility on poverty and also the effect of mobility to Gini coefficient actually is increasing, so increased Gini coefficient, then we are very certain that COVID crisis will increase inequality. So this is what we have. <coughs> First, you get the negative sign here. It means uh, the the, if you get more reduction in mobility, you have increased Gini coefficients. That is, that's a sign. And the second sign is the effect of mobility on poverty here is a lot more, a lot more uh, stronger, much stronger than the effect of mobility on economic growth. The effect of economic the economic uh, the effect of mobility on economic growth can be interpreted as the effect of mobility on average income, right? But the effect of 
mobility on poverty can be can be interpreted is the effect of uh, covid crisis on the poor so if the effect of covid is bigger on the poor than the effect of covid on the average population it means that the economic mobility sorry the covid crisis will tend to increase inequality so this is just a confirmation of our intuitions uh, another thing is this this is the the the, 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 the picture that i got from the same report from the world bank so you can see the school closure affect negatively human capital yeah? you have you have redu- reduction of the schooling years and also even if you are still at school the effect effectiveness of the teaching is deteriorating too why because you can see from here for example the 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 study from home actually will actually in reduce the effectiveness yeah so this is this is the percentage of students this is the simulation that the percentage of student who score below minimum level of uh, of sufficiency in terms of the pisa so so this percentage is increased so it means not only the school closure due to covid will reduce the equivalent schooling years that our children have but also it will reduce the effectiveness of the delivery of the education to these kids and this will have a profound long-term impact on our human capital okay and i'm sorry and this is the this is the big impact of uh, the crisis on unemployment rate so i i borrowed this from the economic intelligence unit report uh, last, last month so the uh, i think next week the, the the bps will announce the exact number but it is predicted that we will have additional 2% poverty as an unemployment rate and it will recover quite a long time yeah So this is something that we have to Yeah. <clears throat> the last thing, yeah, the last thing that I want to share with you is maybe something new <laughs> related to this uh, employment or labor market impact of the covid crisis. Uh, as you can see from this, yeah, the covid-19 pandemic actually will accelerate the digitizations of production information technology adoptions yeah basically the future of work the future of work is the industrial industrial revolution digitization yeah internet of things and things like that yeah so covid-19 will accelerate this so this is the report from the world economic forum last week yeah? So, for example, you can see that 84% firm that is surveyed by the World Economic Forum said that they will accelerate the digitization of the work process. And actually, World Economic Forum is not the only organization that predicts this. ADB also, uh, pre- uh, months before, already pointed to the same thing. COVID-19 effect will further, the expo- further exposing the trend of job polarization, I will explain later, and widening wage inequality among employees. And actually, this is what happened now in the world. And <clears throat> this is actually related to what happened to our to our economy at the moment, yeah? because now our economy is experiencing actually their engine of growth, experiencing the stall of their engine of growth. Many of, engine of growth actually is productivity growth that many economists consider it's. It's source coming mostly from the structural transformations. If you if you if you have more manufacturing, for example, or more industry, then by doing the reallocation of labor from the agriculture to manufacturing, then you have more productivity. So industrialization is actually the key element to this increasing productivity. And what happened now in Indonesia is we can call some people call it or we call it stall industrialization so manufacturing has been stagnant industry has been stagnant but agriculture rising both in terms of the value added and employment 
but what is rising is actually not industry but actually service sector and the service sector where our labor goes to is actually service sector that has low productivity for example this trade yeah, sector or transportation sector yeah. and as a result of those Indonesia for the last decades or so experiencing this is the, the symptom of stall industrialization or the symptom of the premature deindustrialization is that actually the if ideally if a country goes from low I mean the, uh, from low income countries to high income country so what goes along with it is the increasing formality of the job but actually for the last decades Indonesia uh, has been stagnant in making our worker into a formal sector a formal like formal labor yeah? so you have this is a sign of industrialization and and this is also showing that actually when you this is the data of uh, districts Indonesian districts yeah uh, uh, employment by sectors for some particular service sectors yeah from 1990s to 2000 as you can see here I just want to show you that the more district yeah, become service sector I mean independent on service sector then they are normally associated with the increasing inequality yeah. and some theory suggests that this might happen to the uh, something called routine bias technical change so I'm not going to, because time is limited so I wish to explain to you very quickly uh, I have a very good interesting hobby actually when I when I'm when I was students yeah, uh, in Bandung yeah. I always go to Braga every time they have a f- computer fair every year at least they have once I never miss okay what I observe from the fair yeah, yeah, is that the price of computer never change practically yeah when I was like for example many years ago the price of computer is around three to four million desktop yeah? five million or something like that. next year the same yeah next year the same just five million in terms of nominal price it's the same however you know that the quality of those computer if you buy with the same nominal price is actually a lot better actually the the real cost of getting a computer of actually 50% cheaper every year can you can you can you imagine this price of computer 50% cheaper every year in real term of course this will have a very big impact on how we produce good and services people will respond so what will happen is according to this rbtc theory because of this it industry yeah routine job will be replaced by computer by algorithm this is called routinization yeah the increasing non routine job and in in so doing people who are used to computer will have increase in salaries people who are not captech However, people who cannot cope with this new technology, they will becoming low skill workers. This is called job polarization, and the effect of this is, in, in, is, is inequality. And this is already proven in many studies, actually, especially in developed countries. And in Indonesia, some study. This is this is I. I, I have my own study but I don't, uh, I I prefer to use this first because this is a paper recently in 2018 published in one of the best development economics journal Journal of Development Economics who actually show in this table that Indonesia is apparently making a significant routinization here so what happened in developed country like in United Kingdom in France yeah routinization the the, the more jobs becoming uh, you know like can easily be 
changed by algorithm, computer algorithm actually increasing. And that happened in Indonesia too. So it, so we may be experiencing this uh, job polarization or routinization that may explain why our economy actually cannot really, you know, like make the job informal because this, 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 this job is actually replaced by the computer. And my other data that I confirm this, this is from my own research, uh, which suggests that actually if you can see here from the 2001 to 2015, the, the job that are routine and manual, manual means use otot, yeah, muscle, actually declining, yeah, but the type of tasks that are non-routine, but uh, cognitive, yeah, analytic, yeah, analytic means you use your brain to, 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 to perform your task, yeah, and non-routine cognitive personal, that it means you need face-to-face -face interview. Yeah. Uh, apart from not, not necessarily personal, personal uh, you know, first place, but definitely this task that uh, that are non-routine is increasing. Yeah. So it means that uh, this what 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 worry me the most is this COVID nineteen crisis will actually will actually accelerate this process of the digitization, technological revolutions. Yeah? And then we are in the middle of having the bad side of it. Okay? So this crisis, if we are not prepared, then it will make even our, in a, in a, in a lot worse situations in the future, especially in terms of the creation of the job, but most particularly is uh, inclusive growth, more growth, more employment, and uh, more equal income distributions.